Hello, 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 and welcome to the podcast. Uh, it's Ryder and Lisa, as you know, because you clicked the button that had our names on it. You already. use so much hand sanitizer in here. Yeah. You're just con- it's not lotion. Okay, sorry. No, it's fine. I'm just worried about your hands. Like, aren't they dry? No, I'm pretty good. Okay. Yeah, soft little babies. Little babies. Um, the Oilers have postponed their games leading up to Christmas. So no games before Christmas. That means three games will be postponed. I just think it's a very good thing that we won a couple games before this happened. Yep. Because if we were on that six-game losing streak and they would have canceled or postponed games and like people had an extra week and a half to just fret on the losing streak, mm-hmm. like I think the city would have imploded. People were so riled up about that losing streak. Yeah, I'm still convinced it's because we did that McDavid house tour. It ruined everything. It ruined his vibe. He probably has his pregame rituals, Mm -hmm. which was having a nice Epsom salt bath. And then when he got made fun of for that. He hasn't done it since. Yeah. So, yeah, we need to be nicer. Well, honestly, and like, I'm just so... uh, Anyway, this postponement comes at an okay time because we've won a couple games and everybody's like, oh, okay, well, see you in... See you on Boxing Day. We're still doing okay. <laughs> Where is it? Would have just been an entirely different tune. And people are still going to be asking for uh, jerseys for Christmas. Whereas That's if we were true. on that losing streak. They would have been throwing them yeah. out into the road if they got them. What are you going to do with all your spare time now that there's no other games though? Yeah, I don't know. Because I'm not a big Christmas movie guy. I know a lot of people are. Uh, there's nothing. I guess I'll do my Christmas shopping. Oh, you can keep working on your fort. <laughs> I am a little bit worried about it though. As the sheer size of it is going to make it very challenging to get a roof on. Oh, no. If anybody has any tips on how to make a proper igloo outside, hit Ryder up, please. Well, yeah, it's they say you can't go bigger than 10 feet in diameter. Uh Uh-oh. Because, like, then the... Like the, you're, how do you even build the top? How exactly. do you do that? Exactly. Well, you do it in, like, a ring, uh-huh. and you make it so that all the blocks brace each other i'm creating the blocks in coolers Mm -hmm. so and then i'm cutting them out so they're they're working okay but i think i went a little too big so it might have to have like a post in the middle of it who are you expecting to have over like what is the point of such a big igloo well i thought i could have a poker game in it Mm. with some of my buddies to just get out of the house yeah have whiskey tastes really good when you're like in a snowsuit oh so yeah uh, i don't know I have friends. Okay. Well, you don't believe that I have friends? No, I do. I just don't know if it's convincing if you're like, hey, man, uh, I know it's uh, 20 below outside, but... Fort party? Come hang out in my fort. I'm 39. I actually think it's going to work really well because sensing from your attitude, you don't want anything to do with this fort, and that's just fine. Do you have a sign that you're also making that says no girls allowed? (laughs) <laughs> uh, no, it's going to say no leases allowed. All the other girls are fine. Perfect. I'll stay inside where it's warm. Come on over, ladies. No, but don't have too much fun, Kay. I'm going to have so much fun in that fort if I can get a roof on it. <laughs> uh, enjoy some of our favorite moments from the show this morning. And thank you for checking us out live yeah. weekday mornings on Play 107 from uh, 530 until 10 a.m. normally, but pulling some overtime shifts over the next little while. Yep. This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Check out the Southtown Hyundai Advantage at southtownhyundai.ca. What's in eggnog? Question Uh, that I asked myself this morning, and then I did a little digging, and I have the answer. Do you think eggnog is good? You're lactose intolerant. Does it affect you? Does it have dairy in it? It does, yeah, yeah. It has lots of dairy in it. It beats me up pretty good, but it's so delicious that, like, I have to have one a season at least. Yeah, I had some eggnog over the weekend. Uh, I was poured a rum and eggnog. That just opened the floodgates. I just kept drinking eggnog after that. Like, I was basically Rocky Balboa. <laughs> oh, with the amount of eggs <laughs> that you consumed? The, the amount of egg whites that I consumed over the weekend. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, no, that's wrong. Uh, no egg whites in eggnog. Just the yolks. Well, whatever. That's what he eats in yeah, the movie. Yeah, I know. He's eating full eggs. Well, I, listen, I, we're See, talking about what's in eggnog. I just feel like I should clarify. So it's not the egg white. It's just the yolk? Yeah, yeah. You get yolks. Uh, so th- this ingredient list would make i mean a decent amount probably like a jug so you got six large egg yolks half a cup of sugar okay uh one cup of heavy whipping cream there you go two cups of milk and then you got your nutmeg salt 
vanilla extract, and ground cinnamon for topping. There you go. So it's actually like not a very thick list for such a thick drink. Yeah, but have you seen people that like eggnog? They drink the entire thing. Yeah, it's hard to stop, hey? It's so hard to stop. But it's so interesting to me because we were talking about this before we cracked the mics, and you're like, do you know what's an eggnog? And I was like, eggs, I think. It's just like when you have your first Caesar, and then you're like, oh, I like these. And then eventually... Someone's like, do you know what's in Clamato juice? And you're like, tomatoes? And they're like, no. <laughs> well, there is tomato. Clam. And clam. Clam <laughs> juice. guts. Well, <laughs> yeah, I think it's like the salted water from clams. Yeah, and then you're just gagging thinking about so that. So delicious, though. Yeah. I mean, that's I, I try not to overthink anything that I'm eating. Yeah. If it tastes good, I, I'm in. Yeah, it's like so, a hot dog. Like, do you actually exactly perfect? Do example. you know what you are consuming? Do you care? If I Google it, I'll probably like it less. So I just try to avoid. Yeah. I just buy the jugs of eggnog and go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever left something out or left something behind that maybe you didn't intend to? Maybe it was embarrassing. Lisa's got a story for us. We'll get to that in a minute. You've got one for us though. <laughs> I was in a line at the cafeteria at the university. Uh, surrounded by all these old white guy profs. And that would be the moment when my OB tampons decided to escape from my purse and roll down the counter in front of me in front of all of them. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I have a feeling as much as they're wise professionals, they didn't know what that was. (laughs) I don't think they did. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for the call. We appreciate it. Okay, Lisa, what happened? Uh, I'd like to know if anyone else has been in this situation where you go to somebody's house and you use their washroom mm-hmm. and the toilet doesn't work because that's what happened to me over the weekend. So I, I didn't stay at my friend's house. I stayed at her parents' house. And so did she. Like we had a couple of drinks there before we went out and that's where our vehicles were. So we slept there. Right. And then I woke up early in the morning the next day and had to use the washroom. So naturally... I used it. Toilet didn't flush. It wouldn't work. Was the water turned on? I don't know. I think so, because it sounded like it was running after. Doesn't that mean the water after was on? After you tried flushing? Nah. Like, there was water in the bowl, but then when I lifted the back, that didn't have water in it. Okay. So, the yeah, malfunctioning toilet. Yeah. I bet they regret having a toilet that wasn't working. Like, that's one of those things that you're like, oh, I'll get to it. Nobody uses this bathroom downstairs right now anyway. That's exactly it. And it was the bathroom downstairs. Yeah. And so I just left. I haven't talked to them since. Did you let them know at least? Well, I texted their daughter. Okay. And I was like, just so you know, this happened. <laughs> She's like, wow. Okay. Um, But yeah, I don't know if I could ever go back there again. Oh. No. Has anyone else dealt with this? It's so embarrassing. And that plus the hangover right. makes the worst shame over. Like you get back to your own house. Like I had to get out of there. Mm-hmm. I drove home. This was about like 6 a.m. in the morning. And then you go back to bed in your own bed. And then you wake up at like noon. Wow, I'm making myself sound like such a piece of garbage. You wake up at noon and then you're like, ugh, did that really happen? Yeah, yeah. Just a f- wild flashback. I, I, I don't want to be the friend that's known as the girl that left. <laughs> Lee's dumb spine. Uh, okay, question. <laughs> okay, we just got a text from Lee. This reminds me of Dumb and Dumber. I'm just shaving. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, question. Did you leave the fan on when you left at least? No, because I kind of wanted to give off a vibe that it wasn't me. Like I was hoping I was putting all these like scenarios in my head. I'm like, okay, they have um, they have grandchildren that come over often. Like maybe they'll think that it was like the sun. Like in a week. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, They leave it there. I like just like close the lid. And they had like the poopery. So I sprayed that. Oh, good. Good. But uh, yeah, no, I just. Like, I didn't leave a letter. I didn't, no note, no text. Just, like, smoke bombed. Can you imagine what the letter would have said? Like, so- sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'd write. Sorry about that. Yeah. So that'll be the last time you're invited over there. I really hope not, because they have a hot tub. Yeah. I want to go back. No, you're not invited back. I know. Should have left a note. Should have uh, left the note. Darcy, to answer your question, number two. No, please. I have five tips. 
that will help you be the hottest family member in the family Christmas photo this year. There is probably the worst photo of me ever taken Mm -hmm. on Instagram to the point where I couldn't even share it. You were volunteering. I was volunteering. Dude, like that's the kind of thing that you'd share. That's a good thing to share on your socials. But I was like, oh, wow, no. No. What? It is a terrible picture. It's so bad. So I want to hear all of the tips. Like what? Was it a bad angle? Okay, so here they are. Once again, how to be the hottest family member in the family Christmas photo. Number one is stand closest to the light source. So the window, maybe the Christmas tree is giving off some nice light. You might want to stand by it. Okay, yeah, a nice warm glow. Uh, Number two is hold something in your hand to relax your posture. And I've always wondered that because Hmm. you often do see people holding something in a picture. Are they all like just woke? Did they all know that and I didn't know that? Now that I think about it, when I'm not holding something, my hands always look awkward. Mm -hmm. I I kind of cup them. Because they're so big? No. I have very cute hands. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Number three, talk to people right before the picture is snapped. It'll make you like look the most natural Mm. if you're actually like, hey, this is a fun click. You know what I mean? Okay. I feel like my eyes would be closed if I was talking. But that, you know what's hard? Concentrating on trying to keep your eyes open, and then they start to water, and then right as they click, mm-hmm. your eyes are closed. Well, and I don't know how I feel about that one, because if I was waiting for the picture to be taken and just making conversation for the sake of I'd be thinking more about the picture, and I don't know what I'd say. Mm-hmm. You know? I would feel like I wouldn't have control over my words if I was thinking about getting a picture taken. So I might call somebody something... I didn't mean to, you know? Yeah, you uh, turn it into this therapy session, and then everyone would be like, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. okay. <laughs> uh, number four, your face is asym- asymmetrical. So turn your head to one side. Never look straight on to the camera. That's what I was doing in this really ugly picture of me. Yeah, you're looking just staring. straight on. And I looked like a mashed potato. <laughs> I can't even describe. <laughs> just one mashed potato or like a bowl a of mashed? A big bowl of clumpy mashed potatoes was what my face looked like. Okay. Okay, so no more of that. No. You got to have an angle. Got to have an angle. And number five, this is probably the most important tip, but don't let your family know about this tip or else feelings are going to be hurt. You pick the least attractive relative to stand next to. Okay, that is so funny. <laughs> so, like, that's. And you're on that's, your deathbed and you're like, just so you know, all those <laughs> pictures of us together. There's a reason I stand by you. I don't. That's a lot of juggling, man. That's to, a lot to think of. To think about standing closest to the light source and standing next to the least attractive relative. Like, you're going to have to be like, hey, you know, Bert, come you gotta, with me. Get over here, Bert. And also. Holding something like the first thing I'm going to think to grab is liquor, and people are going to be like, "Oh, there's Lisa. They're drinking problems again." <laughs> um, <laughs> All you could find was the sixty banger. We are getting some advice on the text line of what to do. Jen says you need to say applesauce before you get your picture taken. Applesauce. Ooh, what nice happened? Natural smile at the watch, end. Watch applesauce. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Kyle says, always laugh while smiling to maintain the smile. What? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The Olsen twins always say the word prune when they're getting their picture taken. So it's like a nice natural lip. Prune. Yeah. You go prune. Oh, yeah. Is that good? Yeah, not bad. Now, what if I do it straight on? Am I just like a mashed potato with prunes in it? Yeah. Prune. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, mashed, <laughs> mashed potatoes again. Play 107. Kids shouldn't touch the tree. Really? They shouldn't touch it. Okay, they can touch it, but they usually put all the ornaments in the same little clump. Yeah. So, yes, okay, take that moment. They get bored after, like, 10 minutes anyway. So let them have their fun, but then when they're not looking, you move the ornaments to where they're actually supposed to go. Either that, or they get their own little tree that they can decorate okay. all they want. And just mess it right up. Sure. Okay. Uh, but that is that a bold opinion? I think so. The reason we started talking about this, I was at a friend's this weekend, and they had all of their ornaments like above the <laughs> height that like the kids could reach. And 
it was nice, like, because everything was in the place they wanted to, but it looked a little silly to have, like, so many ornaments on the top half of the tree yeah. and nothing on the bottom. And you're like, yeah, kids don't, they shouldn't be touching the tree. Yeah, there's and a system here. I was just blown away that you had such a bold take on that. <laughs> What's up? I agree with Lisa. Thank you. Do you act on it? Oh, hardcore. So you will, if your kids decorate the tree You're poorly. You're like, this is trash. Kids we'll don't touch the tree. Kids don't touch the tree. <laughs> kids don't touch the decoration of the house. Kids don't touch the decoration anywhere. And if I see you messing with the tree, and if I see you messing with the decorations in the house, I'm going to take a gift away every time I see it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, I love the You OCD. guys get Christmas morning. You guys get to destroy everything. You wake my ass up at 5.30 in the morning to open these gifts. By God, it's going to be perfect until that day of hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds like a real joyous time. What's your name? <laughs> it's Brent. Thanks, Thank Brent. Thank you. You're amazing. We're joined by Leah from Bonnie Dune Center. You guys have a bunch of great stuff happening there for the holidays. Tell us about it. We do have live holiday music. Will Kramer's going to be playing Christmas favorites, and he's going to be throughout the mall. We also have Santa photos. Would you believe Santa's back, like, in real life this year? So we're quite excited about that. But we're definitely keeping it safe and stress-free. It's really easy to come and see Santa. You can just go to our website and pre-book your appointment online. Then come to the mall in the promo court. It's right by entrance one. And we're having Santa photos go until December 24th. Now, while that's happening inside, tell us about your community skating rink that is open outside. It's free skating for everybody. It's open to the public and it's going to run until mid-March. It's, of course, weather dependent. We're going to have various activities taking place on the ice rink. And we will be posting updates on our website, which is bonniedoomcenter.com. Leah, tell us more about this Skate with Santa. Sure. We're having a special event coming up on Tuesday, December 21st. It's a free event for families and it's open to the public. You can come and join Santa on the ice as well as we have the skating voyagers and canoes from the Flying Canoe Festival. We're going to have draw prizes every half hour and free holiday swag bags. So it should be a lot of fun. All right. So that's this Tuesday, December 21st, between 1 and 4 p.m. That is awesome. Weather permitting, of course, but assuming it's going to be, fingers crossed, good to go. I mean, (laughs) we're Canadian. We can bundle up to go see Santa. Yeah, you bet. And uh, this isn't just a, a skate with Santa. Beyond that, you can go skating there with the family during certain hours, but right up until like March, right? That's right. We're open right until mid-March, of course, weather dependent. And you can check the uh, rink hours of operation on our website. Again, it's bonniedoomcenter.com. Ryder and Lisa. Brought to you by Southtown Hyundai. Play 107.